Welcome to getting started with the JavaScript SDK. Today we're going to take a look at setting up your development environment, including the sandbox as well as the JavaScript SDK. And then we're going to create and fund a testnet account, take a look at some blockchain explorers, and then finally do your first transaction. So the first thing we'll take a look at is using the sandbox. To use the sandbox, go out to the Algorand repository for the sandbox and then go ahead and clone this repo. After you've cloned the repo, bring up the terminal in the sandbox folder that you're repoed to and put in the command for sandbox up testnet. This will go ahead and bring up the testnet environment in the sandbox. You can see the address and token information up in the readme file. You'll be using the address and token information when you go to instantiate the AlgoDo client. So right now it's going to the catch up point and it's going to very quickly get us a node that we can use for doing development work. There are parameters that you can provide on the startup command. I used testnet, so we're going to be going to the testnet environment. This also supports mainnet and beta net. If you omit the parameter and just say sandbox up, you'll get a private environment with three accounts that are populated with funds. And you can start developing against those accounts in your code. Also on the private network, you'll also get a indexer. And the indexer facilitates doing queries against the Algram blockchain. Very efficient and very fast queries. The indexer is not available in the testnet sandbox instance or, or mainnet or beta net. Uh, you would need to utilize an existing uh, service such as from PureStake or Algo Explorer or build your own as documented on the developer website, developer.algorand.org. Once the blocks are downloaded, you'll see uh, the last committed block. You can also do a goal command from the command line here. Goal is the command line tool. It's available for use. You can see there's a little bit of a sync time there yet, 25 seconds. But what you want to do is have that get down to zero. Uh, right now, it's just doing the final uh, catch up. And using the dash W parameter, this will give you continuous updates. And you can see it actually getting down to uh, zero. OK, so the next thing we'll take a look at is the JavaScript SDK. You can go out to the uh, Algorand repository for the uh, JavaScript Algorand SDK. If you scroll down to the installation section, uh, you can see what you need to do installing Node.js and then uh, issuing the following com uh, command npm install algo SDK. So let's take a look at that. Now it's going to go ahead and install the JavaScript SDK. And once that's done, we can go ahead and take a look at what version we have with NPM list algo SDK. And you can see right now at the time of this recording, this is version 1.10.0 right there. Okay, so let's get into some code. We're going to go ahead and do our first transaction. Uh, I'm running into bug mode here. I'm already on my first line here to go ahead and call the create account method. So what we're going to do first is create the account. And then once we have the account, then we'll utilize that in the rest of the application that's going to be doing the transaction. So what I I've done here is I've executed the generate account method. Uh, that's going to go ahead and populate an account and also the secret key. And the secret key is going to be used for signing. We've also populated down below the actual account. We're going to go out and go to the dispenser to give some funds to that because you need to have funds in your account to do transactions to cover the fees. Now, the funds here we're talking about are on testnet, so there's a free testnet dispenser that we'll go to. Also, I do want to point your attention to the mnemonic that gets printed out down below. That is the secret key. It's a passphrase that can be used to restore an account. This should be secured with the utmost privacy. 
Uh, you should never share this particular mnemonic phrase or your secret key with anyone. There are places you can keep those inside of a Nano Ledger X, for example, Bluetooth enabled that does integrate with the Algorand wallet. Uh, but these you always want to keep private. You never want to share these uh, whatsoever with anyone. Okay, so let's go out to the testnet dispenser and we're going to go ahead and copy this um, address off and let's go ahead and fund this account. So you can see it's zero algos up there on the display and now we have 10 algos that were actually distributed. There's a link here at the bottom for the transaction ID that we just created in doing this transaction. If I click on it, that's actually going to bring me out to one of the block explorers. Uh, this one here is Algo Explorer. And you can see it works with the mainnet, testnet, beta net. And then also you can go ahead and drill in on any of these items. So you have the sender, the receiver. This is the account that we just created. And you can see here uh, the balance is the 10. And this particular transaction was done against that account 41 seconds ago. There's also another a blockchain explorer by Goalseeker. And this one here you can see has a similar uh, kind of information on it. And you also have support for mainnet, testnet, and uh, beta net there as well. On the mainnet version, you can see the current exchange rate there as well. And here you can search by block, address, transaction, ID, and asset. Okay, back to the code. Let's continue on. So we've gone ahead and populated the uh, account. So press any key when it's funded. And now you can see uh, what we've done here is we've instantiated the client. And the client, you can see here, we're going to go pass in the token that we saw in the readme file for the sandbox. We're going to go against localhost here and our port number as specified in the sandbox. This line here is the one that creates the instantiated uh, Elgo client. So now once we have the client, we can do calls on it. Basically, here's a uh, account information call passing in the address that um, we created up above. And so to check the balance, all you got to do is look at that amount field. So the account information that comes back, you can see many different fields here that are part of this response. And we're going to pull out the amount here. The next thing we want to do is call, do a client call to go ahead and get the transaction params, the, the parameters that are needed uh, for the upcoming transaction call that we're going to do to send uh, algos. You can see the type of information that's in there with a fee, first round, last round, and whether you're going to be using flat fee or not. Now we we'll get down to the point where we're going to create a payment. And you can see that we're going to be using the make a payment with suggested params. So we have the parameter object here that we just looked at. And we're going to go ahead and send this out to a receiver. Uh, we're going to encode a note field. It's a free form field you can use in any transaction. Here we're just putting text in, but you can have a data structure in there as well. Something like a person object with a first name, last name, address, that sort of thing. The sender is going to be our account uh, address. And we're going to send one algo. This is a micro algo. So one million micro algos is equal to one algo. So I'll pass all those parameters in. And the next thing we'll do after the payment is go ahead and sign the transaction. We're going to sign that with the uh, secret key of the uh, sending account. Then what we're going to do is broadcast this transaction to the blockchain. So at this point, when you do a send raw transaction, this is where it looks at the consensus on the algorithm blockchain to determine if there are sufficient funds from the sender account to send the amount they're trying to send and to prevent things like double spending. So let's go ahead and continue on. I'm going to wait for confirmation method that I have. And this simply looks at the pending transaction information and see if it is in the confirmed round of the response. If it is, then we have that transaction completed. And you can see the round number here that it was actually displayed in at the bottom. Finally, uh, we're just going to print off the response that we have back from that transaction and all the information in it including the transaction amount. You can see one algo, the fee that we used, and then the resulting balance here at 899000 for micro algos. So in summary, we took a look at setting up your environment for using the JavaScript SDK today. Uh, that included setting up the sandbox initially uh, and then installing the JavaScript SDK. And we took a look at the dispenser for testnet 
and we were able to fund uh, an account that we created through the JavaScript code and using the JavaScript SDK. We also took a look at Blockchain Explorers where we were able to search on the account and transactions as well as things like uh, assets and uh, applications. Finally, we ended with doing your first transaction and that incorporated creating the, the client and then after we created the client, then we did a call to get the uh, parameters, suggested parameters. We actually did a pay transaction followed by a signing and then the raw transaction. So those three steps of doing the, the transaction, sign it, and then send the raw transaction are needed for all transactions. And then we go, went ahead and displayed the response information after we waited it uh, for the transaction to commit to the blockchain. That's it. Thank you very much for watching.